I'm at the bar on judgments, am I not? We are here to review your job. Would you please have a seat? Like the headsman, I'm sorry. <laughs> the headsman always asks forgiveness of those he is about to decapitate. <laughs> I would really appreciate it if you would leave out historical analogies from our conversation. As you please. Really? I respect accuracy when it is moving and thrilling, and then I would not eliminate a single word. That is so gracious of you. However, sometimes I have the need to take a hand. I discovered this need working in Fustian House this summer. It's actually the gloomiest house in all of England. It's the fault of the house. <laughs> You are blaming the house I for am. those grotesque narrations? I absolutely am. The Fustian House is the dullest house in all of England. Its architecture is in the gloomiest style of Tudor building, and <coughs> nothing would ever happen to it in over 400 years. A girl fell, yes, but not downstairs and survived to be honored by the poor. How am I supposed to make anything out of that? You are not expected to make anything out of the house. You are merely expected to show people through it. I'm afraid I can't agree. I am there to enlighten them, that first of all. <laughs> enlighten? Light them up. Enlarge, enliven, enlighten them. Uh, that was my mother's watchword. She called them the three. She was a great teacher, my mother. Really? At what institution? <laughs> <laughs> the oldest and the best, the theater. <laughs> All good actors are instructors, as I'm sure you realize. I'm afraid I really don't at all. But of course, their subject is us, their sources themselves. Again, my mother's phrase. She ran a touring company of players all trained by her to speak Shakespeare thrillingly in the French tongue. The French? Yes, we moved to France after the war. We lived in an agricultural town in the Dordogne. It was not really very appreciative of Shakespeare. The French peasantry is hardly noted for that kind of enthusiasm. Nor the intellectuals either. Voltaire called Shakespeare Barbare. Did you know that? Barbarian. I'm not excited <laughs> or surprised. The Gallic mind think they created civilization. Well, my mother set out to correct that impression. She called her company in pure defiance. <laughs> Les Barbaires. <laughs> she evidently was not afraid of a challenge. You no, know, indeed. Every girl was trained to phrase faultlessly. And every man, too, I presume? Oh, there were no men. An all-girl company. Indeed. My mother married a free French soldier in France, named, in uh, London, pardon me, after the war, named Dufay, who abandoned her three months after the wedding. <laughs> She took no pleasure in associating with Frenchmen afterwards. They are all fickle, she used to say, fickle and furtive. She raised me entirely by herself, mainly off the road. I was the stage manager in charge of costumes, props, and fights. She was famous for her, Henry. Uh, Richard III, yes. And you know what she did? She used to wear a pillow on her back as a hum. Oh, it was brilliantly effective. No one who ever heard it will forget. The total cry of despair wrung from her on the battlefield. Unchabal! Unchabal! One boy for Unchabal! But the translations were all her own. Oh, what is Oh, not for her. Language was her own passion. I was never able to be anything but the grandest prose. Language alone frees one, she used to say. 
and every night she enacted for me a story from our country's great history. Charles I marching to his execution on a freezing January morning, or the son Charles II hiding in the bowels of an oak tree, his enemies hunting furiously for him below. And to me, my children, my children, my tourists are my children in this respect. It is my duty to enlarge them. Enlarge, enliven, enlighten them. With fantasies. Fantasy floods in. Where fact leaves the vacuum. <laughs> Another saying of your mother's, I presume. My own. When I first came to Fustian House, I spoke nothing <coughs> but was set down for me by your office in all its glittering excitement. <laughs> by the time I finished, my tourists would have gone gray with indifference. That had to be fought. With untruth. With anything. With untruth. I am the daughter of Alice Evans DeFay, dedicated to lighting up the world, not dousing it with us. <coughs> so blame the house, but not the spirit which defied it. And this is your defense. Where people once left it yawning, they now leave it admiring, meaning the state of wonder, and that is no mean defense. It is completely irrelevant. <laughs> Last month, I put a soup bowl by the rear exit, not out of greed, though heavens know I could be forgiven for that with what you pay me. I wanted proof, and people express their gratitude the same way all over the world, <laughs> with their money. And my soup bowl brims. It brims every evening as I watch my tourists walking towards the car park. And those are brimming people, every one. Really? If you were to look through these letters, you might see that they are actually brimming with indignation. <laughs> Churls are always with us. Curmudgeons are never slow to come forward. 22 letters, Miss Duvay. I have 22 letters about you, none of them written in a state of wonder. <laughs> 22? Yes. 22, what's that? I have 50, 60. Yeah. Read them. The voice of the people. I put my address beside my soup bowl, and this is the result. Read them. Please, Miss Duvay, this is my office. Read them. This is my defense. The voice of the people. Read. I will not. I will not. I don't care about your mother, your childhood, your car park. I don't care. We are not in the entertainment business here, and we are certainly not running a theater. That is 